So thank you everyone for um, today. So what, what we've been looking at is ethics and corporate social responsibility. In the previous week, we've been looking at a wide range of other topics relating to organization management or managing organization in such a turbulent environment in which most businesses operate on. And of course, we know based on evidence that consumer customers and uh, different range of stakeholders that interact with organizations are placing so much uh, demand on organization to operate uh, in an ethical manner and also carry out their corporate responsibility to, to the environment and, and to other uh, stakeholders to, to which the activities may, may affect. So that's why we're looking at ethics and corporate social responsibility in today's uh, lectures. And of course, we're possibly going to look at the interactions of uh, the relationship between these particular two uh, concepts. So normally, obviously, once we, we hear the word ethics in business, so there are a wide range of other issues that comes to mind when we hear the word ethics in business. So again, we want to make sure that absolutely that uh, businesses are uh, operating within ethical uh, realm. So you have human rights violations by most businesses that operate uh, unethically and, and of course you have uh, demand from from governments and and issues around communities where these businesses operate and uh, also companies have obligations to 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 protect the environment there are a whole lot of issues around climate change that co companies need to comply with um, there are issues around accountabilities and business conduct in general so there are a wide range of areas that business ethics deal with and it's quite obviously uh, broad sometimes there is a fine line between what is um, ethical and what is legal and what is legal and what is uh, unethical. So there are a wide range of issues that businesses and managers and organizations actually confront with. So managers need to um, understand how to uh, navigate and, and obviously operate in an ethical manner within the business environment in which they, they operate on. So that's what we're looking at ethics. And of course, we'll be looking at the connections or the relationship between that and corporate issue responsibility as well. So obviously, uh, as I've mentioned, you have a um, wide range of implication for unethical conduct can have um, issues for the organization. It can create reputational damage. It can create a reason of issues. We saw, for example, um, Volkswagen um, emission scandals, for, for example, the, um, where the companies actually uh, fix, uh, install some software to bypass um, emission tax. Uh, and of course, what was when the issue actually become public knowledge, um, this affect the reputations, this affect the image, image of the company and not to even mention the fact that the, the company was also fined by regulators as well. And, um, and this is just one example in, in cases where uh, organizations are seen to have acted uh, unethically. And of course, it's having a broader implication through for different aspects of the organization. So you will find issues around um, uh, the fact that consumers, stakeholders, different stakeholders of the organizations want companies to operate ethically, fairly, and also show compassion as well as uh, uh, issues around justice and, and, and morality comes into questions uh, in this particular uh, uh, context. So, so that's what we'll be looking at uh, today. So at the end of this section, so what I want to do is to get us to understand what ethics is and, and corporate social responsibility and their uh, relationship. Uh, I'm very mindful of the fact that obviously some of you will possibly have taken some modules where uh, these these ideas around ethics and corporate social responsibility may have been discussed. Our attention in this particular module is to really draw so much on the application of these ideas around ethics and corporate social responsibility. So I'm not just going to draw on the theoretical aspects. We'll be looking at the practical application of the concept itself, where in the uh, synchronous live sections where we'll look at specific case around this particular topic and then we'll be able to apply what we've learned from these ideas around ethics and corporate responsibility to that particular context. So another point that I want to emphasize today is to look at why business ethics actually um, is important and of course we'll look at ethical dilemmas and different approaches to 
up to business ethics as well. We'll try to look at some models around this and ethical decision makings as well for organizations. So when that is done, I've mentioned the fact that when you look at business ethics, so there's a range of expectations that organizations are expected to operate in a responsible manner, um, obviously engage with different stakeholders and maintain that relationship uh, and keep that trust that uh, stakeholders have in these organizations to be able to uh, operate in a way that they are not actually maybe hurting uh, the environment in which they operate or the local communities. And we saw cases where organizational activities is having an impact on their stakeholders and, and managers need to make sure that they have that uh, um, process in place to, to engage with these stakeholders to make sure that the activities are not uh, jeopardizing the relationship with their stakeholders. And that's why issue of business ethics is absolutely important. So the question around business ethics and corporate social responsibility, uh, you, you can look at this from a from two um, views. You can look at it from a normative or descriptive uh, perspective. So when you start to look at it from a descriptive perspective, so what that means is that, or oh, say so this is this is more like a notion where you're trying to explain or describe, or you're even trying to predict that a certain issues exist. Whereas in a normative uh, concept, you're trying to explain what ought to uh, in evaluating and improving business ethics in in organizations. What that means is that you know certain certain ethical issues, certain uh, business decision that managers will face, they need to they need to understand the the implication of their actions on 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 different stakeholders. For which those actions may may likely to to affect. So managers need to understand that ethical issues are are very delicate uh, issues because obviously uh, just one unethical conduct uh, can have a broader impact on the organizations and its um, activities, and it can damage even the reputations of the organizations. As in the case of books, where the emission scandals, we saw that. Even with uh, uh, the uh, deep water um, uh, BP horizon uh, oil spillages in 2010, we saw it in wider order issues where companies have been held to very high standard because of the expectations societies and, 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 and stakeholders have placed on them. So when you start to look at business ethics from a normative uh, point of view, so this is where you start to look at issues relating to uh, principles, values, and norms uh, for organizational decisions. So again, uh, from a very descriptive point of view, um, where you start to see issues like code of conduct within organizations or standard of conduct or compliance uh, systems. And, and these um, obviously can, can help managers to make decisions relating to right or wrong within organizations. So this is what business ethics in that in that particular context is trying to look at so you look at wide range of issues relating to how organizations can manage uh, some, some of these uh, uh, very delicate issues for for the organization itself again so my my questions around around this, the way i like to, to look at this is where you then like, try to look at corporate issue responsibility uh, this is about uh, the values and principles um, to where the organization is trying to fulfill both economic, legal, or ethical and uh, philanthropic uh, responsibilities. So in other words, businesses do not really have um, a core obligations to, to carry out some of this corporate social responsibility, but as part of the business catches, maybe from an ethical point of view, they think is the right thing to do, or from an economic point of view, they're trying to engage with stakeholders and, and do some of these activities to to help stakeholders, uh, local stakeholders in an environment where the business actually operates. So, so the corporate social responsibility um, issues are usually associated with um, when you're looking at evaluation of concepts that may be like social issues or sustainability issue or consumer protection or corporate governance, for example, or, or legal issues or, or, or and regulatory issues. So these these are these are very uh, so in that in that particular context you can see. That corporate social responsibility and and uh, business ethics are a little bit um, very close side by side in that particular regard. So when when you of course just to recap what I've said so far, 
So obviously the idea of corporate social responsibility is that business has that obligation to society beyond just profit. So it's not just about making money, but also demonstrate that we are responsible of organizations. And of course, the evidence around this also shows that co companies that are corporately is responsible, it, they kind of end extra premium for doing that activity. So the research have actually shows shows that and a wide range of companies that have um, uh, been found in these cited as uh, as as a corporately responsible organization. So it's about by considering looking at people, um, planets, profits, and all that should up may, may be issues that may likely to have an impact on the operations of the organization that or this organization needs to take them into considerations. So these this is where the ideas of corporate social responsibility uh, is very powerful for organizations to consider because obviously in terms of any extra premium on, on doing the CSR projects, so it can help them in, in that regard. And when you look at ethics, so you're looking at obviously these uh, normally like in terms of the rules or standard that governs the affairs of, of, of organizations, right? So you can see the, the connections between ethics and corporate social responsibility in terms of business ethics. So these are activities that maybe businesses legally, it, businesses may not be obliged to, to do them, but from an ethical point of view, these organizations go extra mile to, to carry out some of these activities. And these activities may, for example, be part of a corporate social responsibility project. So this is about uh, doing good uh, and not just uh, uh, damaging uh, orders. In, in, in the environment in which the business actually operates on. So the, in, in, in summary, so you're looking at situations where you're looking at, you're trying to figure out right from, for, from, from wrong, you're trying to do the right things. So management actually have their obligations to make sure that they do the right things. They, they, they take care of the stakeholders that may be affected by the activities of this part of their organization. So, so we see, that connections between CSR and and um, and uh, business ethics in this particular regard. But one of the things that we know is that corporate social responsibility can be very uh, complex um, uh, issues because sometimes it's the how do you demarcate between a corporate social responsibility project? So it could be very very complex to uh, to look at, um, and also sometimes it's also based on issues around perception as well. And we know that the 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 ideas around cultural lenses work well can have a major impact in terms of how uh, corporate social responsibility project is viewed by different stakeholders. So why why is the study of business ethics important? We know there are a number of reasons we can we can give this. Number one could be issues around. Uh, we, the organization is trying to in, maybe there's an increasing pressures from from cost from customer or consumer. For example, we know people consumers are now ethically aware, so com consumers or customers of these organizations are more likely to patronize companies that are acting responsibly, that are acting in an ethical manner. So sometimes some companies even go to the extent of adopting that voluntary ethical code of conduct. And sometimes it's also a good publicity for some of these companies as well. And as well, the second point I would like to mention is the pressures from, from the press on unethical business behavior. We saw or cited a case study of Volkswagen earlier. I also cited um, a case study of, of um, uh, BP. Um, and of course, there are more. You saw some cases around Aaron, for example, uh, accounting uh, scandals and fraud. We saw the Toyota and Ford uh, uh, recall. Uh, these are uh, these raises a, a number of ethical issues. We saw allegations um, against Primus, for example, uh, around child labels and and all that in their supply chain process. So these raises a, a number. This creates increased pressures on on some of these organizations to act responsibly. So understanding some of the things that fall within the ambit of ethical uh, practices within an organization is absolutely paramount for managers in an organization. So again, the third point will, will relate to uh, separation of private and public sector businesses. Sometimes within um, uh, the ideas of maybe private um, sector business, for example, you find that there is these ideas around 
uh, emphasis on businesses, private businesses being able to be held accountable. And that's why you see that increasing pressures for, from government, from regulators to, to make sure that the business businesses are within the ambit of the law and also do not just damage uh, the local environment or, or the local stakeholders who may be affected by their operations, by their, by their uh, activities or, of their organizations as well. So we know that um, one, of the, one of those reasons, um, obviously, another one could be to maintain that organizational intangible assets, that's reputations. So you're looking at a good reputation for, for, for the organizations because businesses are at ethically, sometimes they create that. I told you about earlier on around the issues of uh, getting the organization to end extra premium. That premium can only come from good uh, reputations and obviously, we we know that because of um, the fact that organizations and employees can protect them. If you add ethically, you can protect them from being sued from legal fines and, and things like that. In the case of Volkswagen, I mentioned earlier that in the in the Volkswagen case, the companies were was fine, and sometimes as well, it's, it affects their share values, their valuations in the in the stock in the stock market. If it is pub publicly traded companies, their share valuations can actually drop as well and it can damage their reputations as well we know sometimes businesses that um have built up these reputations over the year one single unethical conduct can damage that reputation and it could take a number of uh, years to 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 rebuild and it will be very very costly so business ethics in that particular regard is absolutely paramount for for managers to to be able to um understand and how that um, may affect their organizations as the case may be. So we know sometimes there is that this thin line between, you know, what you would call um, law and free choice. So we, we sometimes want to make reference to issues around the legal standard and um, the society standard and uh, personal standards. So that there's that thin line between these uh, uh, three domains of human actions. And you can make reference to the book of uh, Daft and, and, and colleagues to recommend it for this to, to be able to look at, look at this. Because sometimes what, what, we, what we are emphasizing with business um, ethics is that it goes beyond just the, both the legal or the societal standard to, to just include that, that extra uh, measure to make sure that businesses are acting responsibly in an ethical manner uh, to their different stakeholders. So a, a one, one popular um, uh, framework or, or, or to look at uh, when you start to look at moralities and, and, and ethics is the uh, COBEX uh, three stages of moral de development. So, so you start to look at um, um, and these particular models kind of frame uh, moral development around three key um, these areas where you're looking at pre-conventional uh, moralities where issues around obedience and punishment orientations or individualism and exchange are very much um, paramount at this, at this particular stage. When you then look at the conventional ones, so I think the key things there is the good interpersonal relationship you know among among managers among people where you're trying to maintain social orders at that stage but in the in the post conventional morality so social contract individual rights and universal principles then start to to apply so businesses want to be able to get to these to this post conventional morality stage and that's the one that will be uh, obviously uh, much more for businesses to look at so but again managers have a, 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 a have been put in a very thin um line where they need to understand what what are the things that they they need to do uh in terms of making that ethical choices ethical decisions so uh and managers pose wh whether you be at the uh stage of uh, moral development what do you, how do you get to that post uh conventional uh stage moving from the pre-conventional to the post-conventional stage so that's where managers need to uh want, want to be and Kovic rightly explained this in a way that can help organizations where 
where sometimes because of the leadership style, you know, at the pre-conventional stage, it could be like, oh, it's autocratic, it's very coercive. Um, and of course, you, you, at the conventional one, you're looking at guiding, encouraging team oriented type of leadership. Um, and of course, at the post conventional, you're looking at transforming servant leadership. So that is the mindset when you start to look imagine managers as a servant uh, leaders that can help knowing that you're not just serving the companies, you're serving the wider society, you're serving, you know, the, even the local communities where your business is located. That's the mindset. That's uh, getting towards a stage where the managers in that organization start to operate in an ethical uh, manner, just beyond what is usually required within, within the ambit of the law. So again, I'm just quickly just going to summarize this. So you start to look at various ways in terms of ethical reasons. So managers are confronted with ethical dilemmas, so they could then try to make their practical ethical uh, decision makings, and of course try to look at their behavior that obviously um, will impact on on those. And there are a number of environmental forces and a number of factors that will contribute to the ethical decision making of the managers the question then is depends on the on the managers views within the organizations that will have an interactive impact how that managers is going to make uh, a judgment relating to an ethical elements in which that particular managers may have con confronted so the um, obviously different models you know around ethical um uh, decisions so you can have issues around maybe uh, rule based um, ethics for example duty or you just like maybe I'll just do what what my what is legally required duty based uh, ethics right so um, obey the law you're trying to keep your promise you don't you, you this is more like a basic right so and of course it could also be around the uh, end based ethics where you're looking at the end in mind right so again sometimes it could be that you just concerned with producing the most good for the most people giving equal consideration to everyone affected and the third one here is around the care based ethics where you the managers as a manager is concerned with compassion for people right so so this, this is where um you're looking at if these actions were done to me will I still be in favor of it so that's that's where you start to look at care base right and the other uh, point here is a is a virtue base where you're looking at does these actions represent a golden uh, mean between the extreme of too much and too little so you start to imagine the broader implications of your actions um, who would be affected, how would they be affected, and what would be the consequences if this is done to me, will I take it? And and therefore you start to you start to imagine and putting all that wider stakeholders in mind when when you act within within the organization. So um in, in some so you could have the these ideas, um things around um justice, you could have the moral rights utilitarian um, views of etiquette but the intersection is actually what many uh, researchers have actually advocate for that most managers should strive to and try to talk to that uh, very briefly uh, as I try to wrap this up. So approaches to ethics so you can have the justice approach so where you're looking at decisions must be made on standard of equity fairness and impartialities so this is what the justice approach is about so it's not I'm not just going to dwell so much in that um, you can read that up by going to that uh, 2010 page 169 and of course you could um looking at the uh, utilitarian approach where you're looking at where the moral behavior should produce the greatest good for the greatest number um you're looking at um where situations where employers are monitoring employer use of the internet right so these 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 are these are um ethical issues within organizations that sometimes managers and and what would be the implication of that on employees uh, behaviors um and of course the the other part is the individualism approach where you you add uh 
you add as more up on you when produce the um, individual best long-term interest so you you want to add as much when you promote the individual long-term interest so uh individual self-direction here is very paramount and of course i think what managers need to be aware of is the fact that you want to be able to uh, trust your employees to do the right thing for uh your organizations and for the stakeholders to which your businesses actually operate on upsided numerous ca uh, cases we saw backlist we saw uh, Primus, we saw uh, BP, we saw Toyota and Ford and the rest of all other organizations that have been caught in, the, in, in, in an ethical web, to use the word ethical web in, in quotes. So approaches to um, ethics, so we, we look at moral rights in this particular case where you're looking at uh, moral decisions are, are those the best maintain the rights of those affected right so this this is uh in situations where you're looking at okay an ethical decision is one that best maintain the right of those affected by by it this is about moral rights approach to to looking at ethics and we can apply this to to wide range of situations and depending on which approach an organization takes is going to have a, a an implication for for the organization and the numerous stakeholders uh to which that particular organization actually face so I'm just going to um, go to the next one. Uh, when you start to look at uh, six moral rights um, to uh, be considered during decision making, for example, these are listed on on you on, on this slide, so you can pick them up. You can read uh, you can read through uh, these. I'm not going to dwell so much on them, but I think the, the 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 most important one, the first one, I just want to quickly emphasize on is the the right of free uh, consent. So you want to make sure that obviously that individuals are treated um, only as they knowingly and freely consent to be treated. So that's that's uh, based on the moral uh, right uh, approach to, to ethical decision making within an organization. But of course, I will encourage you to pick up and read through uh, the other parties as well. So we saw um, a couple of steps to ethical decision making in organizations. These these are very complex. Making ethical decisions is very complex. So managers need to be um, very very mindful of of that. So you want to make sure that you think through the ethical dilemma that the managers are facing within the organizations and identify all component as objectively as possible. You want to look at. We want to consider options. And then, of course, you want to be able to decide which option is most ethical and how can the options be implemented and what are the consequences of that particular decision. So you, you kind of move from when as a manager, you face that ethical um, dilemma, you, you, you navigate, you try to consider all range of options that is available with to you as a manager in that particular organization. And then you try to narrow that options down to a stage where even when you try to implement, you're looking at the consequences of your decision. Now, right now in the middle of pandemic, if an organizations are producing PPE, um, as a manager, if you are, or your organization is in, uh, is supplying PPE and then maybe a particular countries have come to buy up everything, knowing that for example other countries may not have access maybe you find the the drugs or the cure for for covid and a particular companies or, or countries have come to buy up the entire drugs uh knowing that these other other uh, countries may not get this you are you are not trying to uh face with the situations where do you sell the entire drugs to these particular uh countries that have come to buy up uh these drugs or do you set part of it so that other other nations can also have access to this particular uh uh, uh product that you've developed so so that that's the sort of ethical decisions that managers sometimes do face and of course you're trying to weigh the 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 the, the consequences of your decision as the case may be so in an ethical dilemma, so you're trying to figure out what you would do um, where in the situations where 
you're more like the moral ag agent uh, as I've mentioned. Uh, and of course, um, it could be that do you use your organization internet for personal use? So again, these are these are just an examples of the moral the type of moral dilemmas that sometimes managers face within an organization. And it's just very important that as a manager, you need to consider what you need to do uh, to navigate, to make the right decision in these particular contexts where there is no obvious right or wrong. So I've, I've, made, I've made mention of sometimes some of the mechanisms for managing ethics. There's code of ethics within the organization. There's ethical structures within the organizations where there are ethics committees that look at issues, ethical trainings and discipline, narrow committees, etc., and even whistleblowing um, is also another mechanism through which organizations have been held accountable. These are other things that managers and leaders within organizations obviously needs to be um, aware of. I'm not just going to dwell on the code of ethics. You can pick that up um, and, and read that. So it's more like the code of ethics is more like corporate statement on ethics. It's nothing more than that. And the idea is to encourage ethical decision uh, making and behavior in that particular organization. We saw a, a very popular uh, um, movies around uh, the Titanic. Um, this was uh, the fact that a number of people say, oh, the Titanic, actually, the disaster actually be began sooner than uh, hitting the iceberg. And what happened is that there are some people who make um, um, the court costs, right? So the court costs uh, are trying to use uh, cheap materials to, to, to develop these particular uh, boats and also issues of planning for uh, life, uh, the life boats on board as well they, they actually less live boats on board than the number of people on the uh ship itself so this raises a number of ethical questions because um how many people do you decide to give your life uh boats uh when you don't have enough so that raises a lot of ethical uh dilemmas for for managers in in an organization so in the case of the Titanic, for example Will you save women or children first, and why? And what will you do in that sort of situations where the number of uh, lifeboats that are, that is on board the ship is actually less than the number of people on board? And therefore, even though managers, those who are responsible for you know managing that particular ship, knows that they knows the number of, of people that the capacity of that of that ship and the number of lifeboats that they actually have. So this is this is why it is good for businesses to act responsibly. It's good for businesses to act ethically uh, in, in at all times, and that's why we're teaching this as well. As a manager in an organization, you need to consider the ethical implication of your decision. So there are, there are a number of examples that we could go through and go go over, but I would just encourage you to go back and just look at these and and pick them up. Uh, and see what, what what sort of decisions will you arrive at and why. So for me, so you can we can summarize these by 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 looking at um, a number of issues. Uh, another another point that we like to just emphasize is the is the ideas um, around the connections between ethics and corporate social responsibility that businesses just need to act responsibly at all time. And you can refer to the traditional um, work of Carrie 1971 lays the foundation for corporate responsibility in academy of management review. That work is still um, very much valid and I think it developed into a book much more later. And you can also look at the book of that as well and other, other papers as well around this. So next week, um, we'll be looking at um, uh, ethics and corporate social responsibility too. And of course, we're also um, looking at assignment support as well. We'll be looking at report um, for for your um, for your assessment one, so I will encourage you to start working on it, and of course engage with your tutors as well. If you have any questions, of course you can ask them. So thank you so much for uh, listening today, and of course I will keep you um, updated with the materials relating to um, week uh, 
week nine, where we start to look at the um, ethics and corporate social responsibility too. And of course, don't forget to start working on your. So thank you so much. And uh, I will see you uh, next week. And for some of you that are in my seminar group as well, I will see you within the group where we'll start to discuss your assessment support as well. So thank you so much. And uh, don't forget to subscribe um, to uh, my YouTube uh, page as well. The channel is there.